Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm coming in very good afternoon. Checking my mic is okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So again, Sanako and very good afternoon. Um, so for today, we will go straight to the first topic. Share the slide. Okay, so the first topic is about uh, the introduction and also the overview of the overall financial system, uh, specifically the financial system of Malaysia. Because as I mentioned, I think during our introductory meeting last week, our financial system or Malaysian financial system basically uh, quite unique in a way whereby um, the structure uh, caters for both conventional and Islamic system is yes, therefore uh, yeah, small in terms of offerings or in terms of products available to the customers might be different from other countries okay so here you will be exposed to the what is financial system is all about what are the participants under the financial system here you can see we have the financial markets and also the financial institution. So you will see afterwards the difference between what is financial markets and what is financial institutions. And when we talk about these two uh, broad categories of market, you will see two different entities or two different governing bodies that manage or supervise these two markets. Then after that, we will discuss a bit. Okay, we will not go into detail okay, for every element under the financial market and financial institution because each element will be discussed further in respective topics. Okay. But we will discuss a bit about the functions. You don't know. And lastly, uh -huh. <coughs> I'll touch a bit about the Islamic banking, which is one of the elements that uh, differs in our yeah. system as compared to the rest. So, yeah. As I mentioned, the Malaysian financial system comprises a very considered diversified range of uh, institutions, the companies that serve multiple products to the customers. And as you are aware, if you compare the customer opinion requirement 20, 30 years ago, in the comp compared to the customer yang ada sekarang, obviously the demand, you know, the needs will be different. Current generations of customers have more complex requirements. So therefore, the financial systems needs to be evolved. Okay, so they can come out with new products to the customers. So that's why in recent years, you can see some of the products that are digital. We have more uh, modern looking products. Okay, specific topic covers the elements of, uh, for example, like Financial technologies, fintech. 
So fintech tu pun sebenarnya salah satu elemen that you know uh, try to cater the complex needs of the domestic economy. So yeah, as I mentioned juga tadi, financial system here in Malaysia consists of two both uh, conventional and Islamic, and these two financial system coexist and operates in parallel. So they're running side by side, both conventional and also Islamic. So this is the structure that you need to, I don't want you to memorize, I don't want you to remember, but you need to understand and you need to visualize what it is. Okay, what we have learned throughout the semesters is actually based on this structure. This structure of the Malaysia financial system. Okay, and you can see it's split into two. Okay, it's part of it. You know, in the country, it's okay, part of it, it's part of it. If you notice, I have been intro tadi. We have financial markets, and then we have satu lagi financial institution. Okay, so on the left hand side here, we have financial markets, and on the right hand side is the financial institutions. Okay, so in short, it's called the FI lah, financial institutions. So who govern these two particular markets? For financial markets, it is governed by the Securities Commission. Okay, I'll talk to you in short. In short, it's going to be SC, Securities Commission. Okay, whereas for uh, financial institution, it is governed by Bank Negara. Okay, I'll talk to you in short. I'll talk to you in short. Bank Negara Malaysia. Okay, so obviously, Bank Negara, location-wise, it will be in the center of all local. So, siapa yang biasa naik commuter, we have one commuter station, uh, dia panggil Bank Negara. Station Bank Negara. So, it's very close to Tataran Merdeka, quite quite nearby juga kat situ. So, that's the place, I think, the location of Bank Negara. And Bank Negara govern these two particular system. We have the banking system and also the non-banking system. And the FI is non bank financial intermediary. Right? And for Securities Commission, okay, the location is in Bukit Kiara. Right? Bank Negara tadi dekat KL. But for Securities Commission, it is in Bukit Kiara. Kuala Lumpur juga, cuma it's not really in the center. It's slightly outskirts. Uh, just nearby to National Science Center, to Success Negara, just next to Success Negara. So under financial markets, we have four different markets here. We have the money market, the capital market, derivatives, and offshore. Okay, so under money markets, uh, we have the money market itself, and also forex, foreign exchange. So one criteria that you need to know when we talk about money market is one uh, this market in money market involved with uh, short term instruments. Okay, short term instruments. So what does it mean by short term instruments? Uh, the products are upon the, the instruments that being trade in money markets. If the maturity is less than one year. Okay, maturity, yeah, maturity there, less than one year. That's the definition of money market. Must uh, transact for short term instruments, okay, and they be maturity not more than one. Okay, so it can be from one night, okay, from one day at the one night with the transactions up until 12 months for one year. Okay, that is money market. So what do the yeah, under money market itself. And so the forex market, okay. and then the second market is known as capital market. Okay, capital market. So capital market, they uh, transact slightly longer terms uh, instruments. So for capital market, kita panggil dia medium to long term, ah, uh, medium to long term, and the transaction usually will be more than one year. Be more than one year. Some of the markets. Uh, doesn't have maturity but if, uh, if there's any maturity for example macam bond 
So for Bonnie, it may reach usually between 5 to uh, 40 years. So very long. Right. So for equity markets, selalunya, there's no So equity, as you know, dalam bahasa dah ataupun the more common terms used in general, this is where the share market, okay, the share market is being traded. Di bursa saham kalau Malaysia kita di bursa Malaysia kan, so that is actually our equity market where company trade their shares with the public and from the investors. That's equity markets. Or bond markets is actually a, a tool of the instruments for companies to raise funds using long term instruments. That's why they between five to four years. As I mentioned earlier, I will not go into detail now why. The first topic is about the introduction, the second topic is about interest. Okay? But starting from topic three onwards, okay, I can cover every element of the Markets. For example, topic B, kita akan discuss about the money market itself, and then the capital markets. Topic tadi apa? Three, four, topic five derivatives. And for this semester, I add one more topic, which is the offshore. Yeah, I just decided to incorporate offshore as well. Ikut dalam market ada, tapi dalam syllabus tak ada. So I rasa you guys need to know about the offshore market as well. That's why. So that's why for this semester, I just I just add. Uh, one more topic. So, if you download the performa, you can see lah. I satu lagi topik baru, which is offshore market. Okay, so setiap satu elemen ini will be discussed in respective topics. Okay, so that's one side. Eh, the left hand side here refers to the financial markets. Okay, so every markets have different reason and different. Uh, okay, um, different. Uh, function lah to the customers right so for accounts uh, for bankers for example that require short-term uh, liquidity they will go to the money market okay, to balance the liquidity for example so for companies who want to raise fund in uh, long terms they will go in the capital markets which uh, issue shares or issue bonds for example. right so for companies that want to uh, manage their risk can use derivatives short -term. so Setiap satu market ni ada function dia. Okay, and the detail of the functions, how it works, the mechanisms, we discuss in respective topics as I mentioned. So, macam kita cakap tadi lah, this would be chapter 3. Ini topic 4, chapter 4, chapter 5, and during the topic, so kita akan discuss in details. Okay, but for today, um, kita akan focus a bit more on the banking side. Okay, kalau tadi financial markets, here on the right hand side, yang under bank negara ni, kita pakai dia financial institutions, FIs. But in terms of FIs, we have two separate uh, entities which is known as the banking system. And also the non-banking side, kita panggil the MBFI, in short, and Banking, financial utility. So, uh, another thing yang membezakan between financial market and financial institutions, this side on the left hand side ni mostly traded by non-individuals. Mostly companies, right? Walaupun ada individual yang boleh macam contohnya macam equity market, ada je individual yang boleh invest. Okay, tapi majority players will be companies. So for rest individuals, uh, uh, some kita akan uh, trade more on the right hand side. Okay, can, can you guys mute? What? Okay. 
So for the right hand side kita ada banking dengan non banking system as said tadi. Um, so we start off dengan the most common ataupun yeah uh, in terms of the numbers yang paling banyak sekali available to customers is what we call as a commercial bank. Okay, commercial bank. So commercial bank ni I think every one of us at least run other transactions dengan commercial banks in our lives so far. Okay, so ada dari segi deposit ni, we have accounts, savings accounts usually kita akan buka in commercial bank. Okay, so for, for the usage of every individual, okay, selalu kita akan go to the commercial bank for our transactions. Sama ada kita transaction, deposits, if you want to borrow money to buy a car, everything will be done in commercial banks. Okay, so that's the common ataupun the most uh, visited institution lah among the rest okay. commercial banks okay. so here in Malaysia kita ada about twenty odd uh, banks in the country so, kalau ada consider as anchor bank kita ada lapan okay. so ada detail nanti aja and as I mentioned earlier tadi as you know our Malaysia financial system has two a system kan, the Islamic and also the conventional. So for Rome Japan, mostly covers the conventional elements. So for the Islamic parts, we have a dedicated institution known as Islamic banks. Okay, hanya commercial bank je yang akan split between Islamic and conventional. Okay, from banking system, right? So Islamic banks actually technically is a commercial bank juga. Okay, Islamic bank is actually commercial bank, but they have a different act. Akta yang berbeza, right? And on top of that, uh, in terms of the offerings, actually is more or less the same as commercial banks. In fact, some of the banks at the branches they share, okay, they share their punya infrastructure lah. Infrastructure dia share. Maknanya kalau kita pergi dekat satu branch, they may offer both the conventional dengan Islamic. Okay, cuma dia akan channel to a different accounts lah in conventional and Islamic. Okay, so next ini uh, the next the next type of uh, banking system is known as investment bank. So investment bank unlike commercial investment bank tak banyak branch. Okay, in fact investment bank in the country hanya ada selalunya uh, in town, kawasan mana besar. Here in Tanjung Malim, obviously we don't have any investment bank. So the nearest here either go to KL ataupun Ipoh. That would be the nearest uh, investment bank available. Okay. Yes, but memang uh, most of the time, they hanya ada di big cities. So maybe kalau di Semenanjung, for example, besides KL, there will be in JB, for example, so Ipoh, maybe. Maka or Seremban, maybe some of the banks may have branches in the in the Seremban or Melaka and Penang obviously they will have that as well okay. um, and in Sabah and Sarawak maybe they will have branches in KK and Kuching and again the function will be, be not the same as commercial banks okay, so investment bank cater for different functions and commercial bank and investment bank will be discussed in respective topics you got nanti kalau tak salah commercial bank will be in Seven, seven. And investment bank have their own topic. Topic. I think around seven. for investment bank. Okay, and for others, okay, for others, uh, it's actually like a bank, but usually they don't uh, operate at full capacity. So contoh-contoh banking system yang consider ada others ni kita panggil dia representative office contohnya okay, representative office ni is actually a bank ataupun overseas bank okay, overseas bank that uh, don't operate uh, yeah, they don't operate here in Malaysia as a, as a full bank, full flash bank tapi dia buka 
representative office. Representative office ni apa? Hmm. It's just like a wakil lah. Okay, kamu pun representative. Eh? So, dia hanya cater for clients yang dah sedia ada. Existing clients. So, for example lah. Like I said lah, selalunya red office ni is from overseas. Katakanlah one bank in from UK, they have uh, client who, who own a business in Malaysia. So, dia dah ada account dekat negara asal ini UK for example. So, they don't want to open new accounts in Malaysia. So, what they do? But they ada red office kat sini. So, dia hanya berurusan dengan the existing bank dia dekat UK tapi melalui representative office kat sini. So, this representative office will entertain the existing client dia. Dia tak akan buka new accounts for new customers. So, kalau ada new customer nak buka, they have to go to the existing banks yang ada lah. Not this red office. So, red office ni hanya cater for existing customers from overseas. Okay, so that is part of banking system juga lah. So, that's one side. And then we have on the right hand side, the very end here. We have the NBFI secretary, non Bank Financial Interim Dilu. We have the first one, Provident and Pension Funds. Okay, in Malaysia, we have two very prominent uh, provided pension funds. We have not EPF. Okay, or provident funds. Atau pun dalam bahasa kita panggil kita dalam SP. Okay, kumpulan wang simpanan pekerja. So that's one section. And for government, uh, the money will be kept. AWAP. Okay. Dan wang awam. This is for public uh, public servants atau government servants. So the money for pensions will be parked under this fund and that's, they are part of uh, provident and pension funds. So for these uh, institutions, function they obviously to uh, help to assist employees. Okay, semua tenaga kerja in the country to uh, save their money for their retirement. Okay, so provider and pension fund are more pensioned. So this is basically uh, funds for retirement. So therefore, uh, the money will be deducted from uh, everyone's uh, salary. Termasuk either EPF atau PWAP. And their functions is to invest our money. Okay, your money will be deducted kan every month. And this uh, institutions, EPF ataupun KWAP, will invest our money with the intention to generate more returns for their contributors. Contributors ni semua pekerja lah. Maksud siapa yang pernah pekerja ada potongan EPF for example. Yeah, your money will be part of these institutions. And they will be one of the biggest investors in the country. So, dia ada duit yang banyak, amount of funds yang besar and this money will be invested in various investment. Okay, so that's the function. Okay, so we have some commercial banks. And we have a special institutions, okay, next one, Kasi, which is known as DFI, okay, Development Finance Institutions, in short DFI. Okay, so the development finance institution is a specialized, kita panggil dia, specialized institutions set up by the government. Okay, so for the FI, every, every banks, every institution are the function here yeah, to cater a specific organization, so a specific segment of the dalam negara kita, as in business. Yeah. By the way, the FI memang caters selalunya for businesses. So, so contohnya, one of the uh, largest uh, DFI, Development Finance Institution in the country is SME Bank. SME Bank. Walaupun nama dia bank, ada belakang tu kan, SME Bank. They are not commercial banks. They are not normal banks yang kita tahu selama ni. Okay, they are DFI, Development Finance. So, their function is to help to assist SME, small and medium enterprises, if they require funding. 
okay, the company yang falls into the category of SME, if they requires funding, they require fund basically, they can go to the FI. So, dapatkan pinjaman. Itu satulah SME. Dia ada lagi. Contohnya, Agrobank. Okay, again, the FI ni kebanyakannya ada perkataan bank dalam dia punya, punya nama but they are not commercial banks. Okay, so you later on, bila kita go into detail what is the difference between commercial and the FI, you can see lah uh, the difference between the two. Okay, so kalau Agrobank tadi, dia cater more to companies ataupun operations that requires uh, funding related to agricultural businesses. Okay, company-company related to Agro, dan Agrobank. So, setiap satu DFI ni ada dia punya, panggil dia mandate ataupun ya, government punya segment lah. So, macam SME Bank covers SME, SME Bank covers company yang related dengan agricultural law. dan pembangunan more on uh, industry base solution. So, dia adalah target client dia. Okay. Um, Alright. This is quite uh, outdated lah in terms of savings institution. Kita dah tak ada kalau salah. We don't have savings institution anymore. We used to have BSN kat sini. Thanks to Pandan National. Okay. But uh, since I don't know berapa lama dah, this BSN dah masuk dalam BFI. Okay, dia dah be part of the other finance BSN. And next we have uh, insurance companies. <coughs> so insurance ni termasuklah as you know, I, I'm sure you all dah belajar insurance planning or apa, sekitar semester ni belajar. Insurance, we have two different side of business. Kita ada life. Okay, and we have general the other one. General. So what's the different? Life insurance just cover insurance nyawa. Okay, anything else? Okay, selain daripada nyawa will be part of the general business of insurance. Okay, so maknanya kalau macam contoh, uh, you have medical cards will be general. If you want to purchase uh, car insurance, home insurance, semuanya masuk dalam general. So, life against the rest lah basically. And besides that, okay, under insurance ni juga sebenarnya kita boleh letak sebelum lagi which is takaful operators. Okay, takaful operators pun sama. Okay, cuma untuk life, dia tak panggil life, dia panggil family takaful. Then we have general takaful. Okay, so function ataupun the, the products, offerings, uh, again, similar macam banks, they offer more or less the same. So, maknanya apa yang ada takaful national, they might offer the same ataupun similar right, similar products via takap. And any other institutions yang terlibat ataupun falls under bank negara punya jurisdiction dan tak termasuk dalam kategori, kategori yang sebut tadi will be part under, under financial companies. Okay. So ini termasuklah uh, fund managers, brokers, okay, semua masuk ke dalam others. So in a nutshell, the whole thing here lah like you akan belajar the whole semester. Okay. Uh, hopefully you will, you know, open up your dimension ataupun your, your, your uh, horizon of financial system. Hopefully, yang akan nampak, kalau kita cakap financial system ni, kita nampak bank. So, bank tu salah satu je of the functions. Jadi, okay, kalau you tengok tu, yeah, there's actually a lot more, a lot more options ataupun participants available in the financial system. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, not every country have as similar as us, especially when we talk about the Islamic the professional uh, horizon. Okay, some, com uh, some countries may have mostly the same children or by market capital and so on. When you talk about Islamic offering, so maybe different. Okay, I'm talking about offer. Okay. 
Any questions so far? So if you go to my video later on, we have loaded the performa for this semester, right? So we have to academics yeah, I can go through this topic. Anyway, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, yeah, we are now in topic number one. So next topic nanti is topic number two, which is about uh, related to interest. Okay, so this is where based on the structure I stated earlier. We have the money market, the property, the capital market, and then derivatives. And I've added the offshore market this semester. Okay. So this whole uh, financial market punya side kita cover from money market, capital, derivatives, and also offshore. So that's uh, yeah, financial markets. On the right hand side, yang financial institution tadi, kita tak go, go through detail lah untuk yang lain. It just focus on the banks, the commercial banks. So next topic is about commercial banks. And on top of the commercial bank itself, it can go through the management and profitability. Okay. Uh, then we have the regulations. And this regulation is not only for banks, uh, it's also for insurance, stock for BFIs, or investment bank as well. And then investment bank is another topic. And lastly, investment companies. So investment companies masuk dalam kategori of others lah untuk financial intermediaries. So yang lain tu kita tak cerita in detail, cuma kita akan go through in topic number one je. Okay. So that will be the main difference lah this semester. I just added offshore market. Okay, so in Malaysia, we just have one offshore market which is in Labuan. Okay, any question? Thanks for any question. I completely recovered from talking. So, so I want to know what I have to bring. So I just want to uh, You can type if you want in the chat if there's any question. Or you can unmute for a while to listen also. All right, so moving forward. So hopefully you get the idea of the financial financial system. Um, all right. One of the activities that I will use, that I will, uh, I will conduct afterwards. Uh, not, not today, lah, basically. But it's the past habis of the one day. Uh, there will be one quiz. Okay, there will be one quiz. Uh, I can I can talk to them sometimes on my group. I will. Post the question in my guru, and it covers generally uh, just briefly, lah, all of these elements. Okay, the financial 
markets and also the financial institutions. So hopefully, um, can grab the ideas lah. Like, the idea cater for every functions of every perspective institution for this particular financial system. So reverse. Okay, we start off so many. What about the detail? We get more more detail lah. Institutions. We have to look at the governing bodies first, always. So in Malaysia, under financial institutions, yeah, it starts off dengan yang kanan dulu ya, financial institutions. We have the very top, the central bank. Okay, every country in the world will have a central bank. Setiap negara, setiap negara akan ada satu central bank. Dalam bahasa Melayu, kita panggil bank pusat. Ha. So here in Malaysia, it is known as bank negara. So bank negara Malaysia, ataupun yang saya mentioned tadi, in short, ada tak ada. BNM. So, it is at the apex, apex ni, at the, low, at, at the very top of the financial structure. So, function ni ada banyak. Nanti kita akan go through what are the functions of central bank. Uh, generally, whatever related to monetary policy, uh, financial structure, financial system of the country, semuanya di governed by central bank. Okay, so... This is one website that you need to go once in a while. At least for this semester. Okay, okay so you have to familiarize with the with the websites about uh for this for this course, banking and financial institutions. We don't have a proper textbooks. Okay, we may have banking books, financial system books, but selalunya buku ni caters for the national uh, financial system which is not similar to us. Alright, so nak tak nak, we have to rely on the original source. So where to get the original source is from Bank Negara. Okay, because they will come up with a lot of guidelines, a lot of handouts related, related to financial system. So that's why this website will be very very useful. So I can, in fact, most of my slides will uh, be compiled it's from the original documents of Bank Negara. Okay. So Bank Negara principal objective is to make sure um, the, the bank. Eh. So the bank here refers to obviously Bank Negara. Lah. Okay. The objective of the bank is to promote monetary stability and financial stability. Uh, conduciveness for the investors, so the welfare of the citizens like us, and also obviously they akan mengharapkan sustainable growth okay, of the Malaysian economy. So Malaysian, uh, Malaysian like the government of Malaysia rely on central bank to assist them with a lot of things in terms of financial stability. Okay, financial stability. So here are the main adjectives of Bank Negara okay, as defined in the CBA. Okay, CBA here refers to Central Bank of Malaysia Act. So dalam akta tu dia dah specify these are the adjectives okay, ataupun function juga of Bank Negara. Why Bank Negara ni ada diwujudkan because of this reason. Okay, reason number one, issue currency. Okay, the sole issuer okay, dalam negara kita hanya satu institusi je yang dibenarkan untuk keluarkan untuk print our money which is bank negara. So they will issue the currency on our behalf ataupun on the government's behalf. And on top of issuing okay, sebab issue dua ni bukan main print je. They have to have uh, a proper reserves. Okay, Kalau you belajar ekonomi uh, last time bila kita tak print money, it must be backed by gold last time. Okay, last time eh. Uh, the money will be backed by gold. So you are the gold yang certain value of gold, you will print equivalent of it last time. But now, okay, uh, the money floated in the in the market after you put weight yang you ada in your pocket, in your wallet. Okay, the government hanya boleh print based on reserves. Okay, reserves. So therefore, 
uh, if our reserve drop in values, automatically our value of currency will drop as well. So that's why function pertama when negara is to make sure the reserve needs to 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 sustain our value of money. So currency lah. So as, as you know, in Malaysia, the currency use is in Malaysia, right? And kalau coins tu, kita panggil sen. Okay? Not dollar and cent. Kalau US, ni dollar and cent. Dan kalau UK, panggil pound and pence. Okay? Here, kita panggil ringgit RM and sen. Alright? So that's function number one. Okay? Issue currency. And also to ensure that the government punya reserves ataupun the national reserves will be kept uh, accordingly and selalunya reserve ni dia akan maintain in a foreign currency okay, sebab jaga kita punya value lah selalunya dia akan simpan dekat overseas Okay, second function okay, Act as a banker okay, Bayangkan kalau kita pergi bank So, bank negara akan jadi banker okay, kepada government. Okay, banker to the government. So, kalau kita tak cukup duit, kita akan pergi bank. Kalau kita ada duit lebih, kita akan go to bank juga untuk deposit. Kalau kita tak cukup duit, kita akan pergi bank to borrow. So, similarly, the government akan go to central bank. Kita pergi bank biasa lah. Dia tak ada duit, kita pergi bank. Dia akan go to the bank, to the bank negara central bank and they will be the advisor and so agent to the government okay so imagine whatever bank can help assist us so central bank will play the same role to the government so that we can see. if the government uh, has excess cash they will salurkan kepada bank negara for deposits and If they have deficit, kalau dia tak cukup, they will go to the bank negara juga and ask them to assist uh, them to get funding. Kita minta cita-cita lah macam mana nak dapatkan funding for government. So that's number two, right? Like as a bank and financial advisor to the government. Uh, Ajati number three, to promote monetary stability and sound financial structure. Okay, so ni more on policies lah. Okay, policies. So, dia akan come out dengan policies to make sure monetary stability and also the financial structure ni sentiasa perkara. <coughs> okay. So, again, detail pasal policy pun uh, tak sesuai buat masa ni. But, we have monetary policies, we have guidelines contohnya are um, policy rates. So that are among the things that bank negara do in order to protect uh, to make sure that the, uh, the monetary system, financial system is stable all the time. Okay, function number four. Okay, to promote reliable and efficient smooth operation of payment system. Okay, so payment system is one of the main things so, sebenarnya nowadays. Okay, I think every one of you pernah uh, involved in online transactions. Uh, shopping online, transfer duit online, so contohnya lah. So all of those payment from one party to another party mesti melalui kita panggil dia payment system atau payment asset settlement system. Okay, one party yang nak transfer and another party yang nak terima duit tu Mesti ada sistem ni tak akan main sebab kita tak transfer physical money, kita transfer online kan. So that system walaupun kita tak nampak as as user kita tak nampak tapi the system tu must be maintained uh, and supervised by a certain institution. So siapa yang supervise? Obviously bank negara. Okay, walaupun the players ataupun the, the one yang manage is the banks but Bank negara akan make sure the system ni always, okay, always running smoothly. So, dia kena sentiasa smooth and also uh, reliable lah yang paling penting. Okay, reliable. Sebab kalau tak reliable, tak ada siapa nak makan. 
you transfer duit duit tak sampai lepas tu hilang will you use that system again obviously not so that's why uh, bank negara kena make sure sistem yang ada in terms of payment must be reliable so that user akan jadi lagi uh, trusted lah okay, dengan that system So untuk payment payment system macam-macam lah eh. I think if, kalau sebelum ni kita ada gyro Okay ataupun short Pun bagi interbank gyro okay, Interbank gyro IBT This is uh, the old way Tak old lah eh. Sekarang pun ada lagi kalau nak guna IBT Tapi I uh, can consider it as, as outdated Okay imagine eh you, you ada account in bank A And you want to transfer to another account in bank B. Okay, last time kita ada IBG ni, the bank jaru. Whereby they have cut off, cut off time. Okay, pukul 11 pagi, pukul 5 petang, something like that. So kalau you transfer before that, the payment will be transferred to the, another account at a specified time. Okay, I'll give example lah, last time eh. If you want to transfer from bank A to bank B, kalau you transfer before 11 in the morning, Okay, duit tu akan transfer to the account uh, by 5pm Okay, bila bank tutup by 5 tu Barulah duit tu transfer Okay, tapi kalau you lewat, you transfer after 11 katakan The money will be processed uh, the next day So, you akan dapat duit tu esok Okay, but, so one of the downside of it is slow, slow. But Nowadays, kalau you perasan, if you go to your online bank Kita ada panggil instant transfer Why you can transfer from one one account to another account in a different bank. Kalau bank yang sama memang immediate, but different banks you can use instant transfer. So ada dua option lah. So obviously people nowadays akan prefer instant. Cuma beza ni is in terms of fees. Okay, instant transfer tak ada apa-apa sen lah. Okay, but nowadays I think most of the time, think ninety nine percent people will go for instant. Okay, it's faster and it's also considered cheap Walaupun IBG tu lagi cheaper sebenarnya But yeah So all of this is part of the payment system So bank negara dia kena maintain Right And lastly number five Influence credit situation to the advantage of nation So credit situation selalunya menyebabkan Again this similar macam policy tapi policy dia specific to credit Okay financing So they will come up with policies uh, related to the uh, credit situation in the country. It's about people requires credit. Okay, credit is a uh, requirement for the economy to cycle. Okay, but if they not maintain properly, credit can bring down the whole economy. Okay, so kalau nak bagi example dulu, kalau lah the government tak control the credit situation It will come one time ago dekat US, kita ada satu crisis dipanggil Subprime Subprime crisis Jadi kalau, kalau nak baca ini, kita nanti boleh google je Subprime crisis This is where uh, in the US, eh, in the US, by the way, in the States whereby their government doesn't control the credit very well whereby dia senang je orang nak pinjam duit okay, dia bagi credit very easily and when we don't filter our customers in terms of credit uh, there's a potential of credit is ada potensi customer tak mampu bayar balik so they, don't, they cannot afford to pay back so if too many people cannot afford to pay back this is what happened in the US as a prime A lot of people cannot pay back. So, bila bank dah bagi pinjam, customer tak dapat bayar balik. So, it will affect the government punya cash flows. Right. So, therefore, bila cash flow tu tak, you know, tak go in cycle, it will affect and bring down the economy. So, that's why one of the function bank negara juga is to make sure that the credit situation tu manageable. Okay, so that's the five objectives atau pun function juga lah for central bank so in order to achieve all of the mandates I mentioned that 
the bank is vested with the powers with the various laws. Okay, ini kita akan discuss nanti ya. Law nanti. Berapa tadi ya? In terms of regulations and supervision for all the banks and non-banks. Ya eh, kita ada dua parties, the banking institutions and also the non-banking. So banks ni, misalnya kalau ingat tadi kita ada commercial bank, Islamic bank, investment bank. Kalau non-bank ni, masuklah ETF, Jules, EFI. Okay, so all of this uh, ada akta masing-masing. So, lepas ada yang share. Okay. You give power to bank negara to basically to the dua kat sini, eh, regulate and supervise. Okay, and bank also administer the country's foreign exchange regulations. You remember in 1997, 1998, during our financial crisis, it started off with the forex. Yeah, I have to show you the line. It started off with forex. Okay, whereby our money our forex market has been hit by uh, outsiders and they affect our economy because of our currency value diminished so menurun eh, value of currency menurun so masa tu kita tak ada banyak you know, regulations related to that and we've learned from that event kita belajar and we improvise system. So that's why all the uh, function here is to enlist the countries for regulation. So supaya especially tak, this event that is ini tak berulang lagi lah. It will not happen again. Because of that, when you can make sure the regulation will be in place need to protect our foreign exchange. So apa yang kita tak buat dulu during the 1978, kita dah put into new regulations and they have to supervise and they have to make sure the regulation up to date in order to avoid this to happen again. Right. So this table I get from uh, Bandega Revolution. So that, but this is the right that I extract lah, this is the information. So here you can see all these institutions under banking and non-banking institutions. So first we have the line the first one four is all banking line line four non bank okay so commercial banks we have twenty six altogether eight relation control and 18 foreign control. Okay. Uh, I, I think I need to share you can lie. Okay. So this is the Bangladesh uh, website. Okay, kini ni bukan main page je lah. Ada aku straight to the link under the financial stability. Kita tengok macam macam ada. Um, this one. I will mention the financial market ni kalau tidak dalam. But anyway, here are the this is a list of licensed financial institutions in the country. So uh, the numbers here I dapat tadi tu, yang summary I gathered from here, ada summarizekan daripada sini. So let's say, kita tengok commercial bank dulu. So here are the list of commercial
structure banks in the country. In the one, kalau you remember masa our first meeting and what you've done dalam group tu kan apa? I ask you to choose one commercial banks kan? One commercial banks. Since we have dah berapa sekarang? As of today, kita ada 39 yang registered. So, I cakap sini ada 4 orang kan? So, most likely kita akan ada about 9 groups kalau tak salah. So, you need to choose any of these sampai 26 ni. Okay, but as I mentioned masa tu, I prioritaskan local. So, L, ownership yang L ni, choose uh, local own. And when, when I talk local own, is uh, local own is not necessarily meaning dia 100% uh, owned by Malaysians. Sometimes other bank ni, dia punya ownership dia uh, from, yeah, from outsiders. Okay, so dia punya owner tu maknanya foreigners. Okay, but majority, when we talk about local ownership ni, majority owned by Malaysians. So in Malaysia, uh, we have from Malaysian own commercial banks, kita ada lapan. Right, kita ada Athin, Lions, M Bank, right, and then we have CIMB, then we have Onlyon, uh, Malaysian Banking, and the Mi Bank, okay, Public Bank, RHB Bank. That's it. Eight banks. Eight. Eight. Locally owned commercial banks. Right? And the rest of it, I think, kalau sini ada 26, so ini ada 18 yang lain, are considered as a foreign owned bank. Okay, so macam, starting from BNP Paribas, Bank of Bank, Bank of America, Bank of China. And bear in mind, eh, bank-bank lain ni, uh, tak semestinya dia ada banyak branches. Okay, kita kena nampak bank Amerika kat Tengah Malib. Yalah. In fact, Bank Amerika ni, I think dia ada satu je branch like that. They don't have any branches in other place. Okay, tapi kalau macam, uh, for example, HSBC. Okay, nationwide dia ada. Tapi still, HSBC selalunya dia caters for big cities. Right? Dan, else, tak ada. OCBC. Uh, standard Chartered. Okay. One of the oldest bank in the country is actually Standard Chartered. HSBC lah antara bank awal country. So the rest are considered quite new. Okay. So that's commercial bank. <coughs> okay. Next is Islamic banks. Okay. So the total of 16 and we have 11 control, uh, Malaysian control institutions. We have the local old majority lah. And only 5 young foreign Okay. So for Islamic banks, they will structure, okay, they do structure, uh, we can find you, uh, good match. And subsidiary. So what does it mean? Full flat share means they purely Islamic finance, or Islamic bank. Okay, when I said, full-fledged Islamic bank, it means dia hanya ada Islamic bank, dia tak ada conventional. Contoh, kita ada uh, Bank Islam. Okay. Uh, kita ada Islam. Our university use Bank Islam, eh. it's our main banker. So, yeah. Bank Islam is one example of full-fledged. Another full-fledged bank uh, would be Bank Mu'amalat. It's a full-fledged bank. Dia tak ada conventional bank. Whereas kalau subsidiary here, refers to bank with the conventional companies, conventional subsidiary companies, atau conventional parent companies. So, example paling simple, Maybank lah. Kita ada Maybank biasa, Maybank. Dan the one is Maybank Islamic. Okay, CIMB, CIMB Islamic. Okay, Public, Public Islamic. So, those are subsidiary. Okay, so structure-wise, itu je lah beza dia. Satu yang memang purely Islamic, satu lagi dia subsidiary. So, in total, we have 11. 11 yang Malaysian own. So, if you remember, I said tadi, in commercial banks, we have 8. Okay, this is important. Dalam commercial bank, kita ada 8. Kita panggil dia anchor. 8 anchor banks. Okay, I go through tadi, semua yang dalam commercial bank, yang ada 8 local tadi, yang 
all those eight akan ada Islamic Bank subsidiary dia. So, bila kita, kita mention pun ada sebelas, so maknanya out of these eight, dia ada lapan subsidiary. So, ada tiga yang lain tu disediakan sebagai full flash. So, maknanya kat sini. So, sebelas ni, full flash ada tiga, dan subsidiary ada lapan. Okay, so the full fledged includes Bank Islam, Bank Muamalat, and we have another one bank which is known as Bank MBSB Bank. So here are the list 16. Eh? Uh, Islamic banks in the country. So, yang L ni local, kalau biasa kita cakap ni lah. Ada Afid, Lions, M. Okay, yang Bank Islam, Bank Muamalat, ada the full branch. We have CIMB, Hong Leong. This is the one. This is yang nombor sebelas ni is uh, the latest lah. The latest participant in the country. Okay, MSB Bank. Family Bank. So, yang foreign own semua adalah tak semua sum again ada yang full fledge ada yang subsidiary juga so yang full fledge termasuklah RRG okay, it's a foreign own from Saudi Arabia uh, we have uh, Kuwait Finance House KFH okay, from Kuwait and so it's from Kuwait and the rest are subsidiary of conventional banks so contoh of foreign kita ada HABC kalau kita ada HSBC biasa and then we have HSBC Amana then we have OCBC, the normal OCBC bank and OCBC Alami then we have Standard Chartered Bank we have Standard Chartered Study so untuk yang foreign dia ada nama tambahan kalau kalau Malaysia kalau berpesan dia hanya tambah perkataan Islami tapi for the foreign dia implement the, the additional names macam contohnya Amana Al Amin Sadiq. Okay, that's the approach difference between local and foreign banks. Okay, so kat sini kalau nak pecah. So for protect, dia ada tiga juga. Eh, ada dua, sorry. Sedikit. So protect. Then subsidy ada tiga. That's the Islamic banks. For international Islamic banks, we only have one. So what's the difference between Islamic banks and international Islamic banks? The international Islamic banks is not for individuals, it's for companies. And the, uh, one of the main difference would be they can transact in foreign currency. Foreign currency. <coughs> So here, dulu ada banyak kan, we have, we used to have three international Islamic banks, but now we only have one. It is a foreign own. Okay, a foreign control institution, this only one. Okay, so it's from Indonesia, Indonesia bank, it's Indonesia, Indonesia own. PT Bank Muhammad Indonesia. This one. Okay. And next is investment bank. So remember the eight I, I mentioned earlier. That's why I, I letak the eight anchor. Again, similar like Islamic banks. The investment banks, kita ada sebelas kan? And all local owned. Okay, but out of these 11, eight is the anchor yang sama. Okay, whatever we have eight option banks and local tadi, they have their investment banks. So ada tiga yang full-fledged investment banks. Okay, so again, kalau kita tengok perasaan nama dia lah, kita ada Afin tadi, jadi dia, dia joint venture dengan Singapore Money Bank, Kuang, Afin Kuang investment banks, and we have Alliance Investment, kalau ada M Bank, ada M Islamic, dia ada M Investment, dia ada CMB Investment, Hong Kong Investment, M Bank Investment, Public and RHP Investment. So, the, the word yang dia tukar hanya perkataan investment bank. 
so the three full fledged is EF investment bank, Kedanga investment bank, and MIDF from Anang. So there are three full fledged yang hanya ada investment banks, and the rest, the eight I mentioned earlier, are all from the same anchor banks. Yang I mentioned earlier. Okay, so that's the banking side, okay, the banking institution side. Next, we want to look at the non-banking side. Okay, so we have the insurance companies. Okay, uh, we have 14 in total, 4 Malaysian owned, 10 uh, foreign owned. And we have general, as I mentioned earlier, our in Malaysia, the insurance are run into two separate business, the life insurance and the general insurance. So life just focus on life. I'm a life insurance company. So memang, memang focus on life sahaja, insurance nyawa. Okay, whereas um, other than life, dia akan masuk dalam general. Okay, so for life, mostly, kalau tengok player dia, uh, mostly foreign, 10, hanya 4 dia local. For general, uh, Almost even, eh? 10 Malaysian own, 12 foreign own. So to give you some ideas, <coughs> let's look at life business. Eh? Okay, so much like AIA, for example, is very one of the oldest insurance company in the country, AIA. Okay. Uh, some of the banks yang anchor tadi pun ada dia punya insurance arms, which are affiliated tadi. They join venture dengan AXA. It's an international company, tapi bila dia letak sini local bermaksud, majority shareholders are from AFID. Okay. And a lot. This is not Alliance, this is Alliance. It's a German company. So Alliance is a foreign owned. Okay. M MetLife. Okay. Uh, you nampak kat anda pandai M, you know is part of the M Bank punya uh, companies. However, when they label it as foreign, uh, the MAC life ni is the, the majority shoulder. So, M ni is just minority. Then we have Etika. Uh, as you all know, Etika ni is part of Maybank. They, they, they tak guna perkataan Maybank. Maybank insurance lah. They use Etika as, as their branding for Maybank. Then the other Gibraltar, BSN. Okay, BSN, as you know, is a local bank. Since the label as F is important, but in the Gibraltar company is the majority shareholders. We have the Eastern, Hollywood Insurance, okay, this is uh, local owned, CIS, Life, Prudential, Kirin, and Zurich. So here are the companies. Uh, like. For general, okay. So notice they didn't use the, the word life insurance, they used the general insurance. So they have more, they have many. So some of the, the insurance company focus on the specific types of insurance agents also. So like QNI, I think, uh, they mostly covers uh, as an accident, uh, traveling. Tune, if, if you notice Tune, it's part of a, a Air Asia. Tune and to talk uh, to the hotels. Lah. So they have also Tune insurance. So what we would for the Fernandez and the Indian partners. So the Slavic covers caters for insurance uh, related to travel. Really, actually, you know, the airline tickets to kind of the options kalau you nak ambil travelling insurance ya. So, you can add up dengan Q. Okay, so anything got to do with non-life punya insurance, we go to the general business. Okay. What else? Okay. So, besides insurance yang kita selalu dengar, life general, and ada yang combine life and general. Okay, this is reinsurance. We have reinsurance. So the life and general in one and other your life side and also general side. So what are the functions of reinsurance? Some insurance company 
have a paid up capital yang tak besar. Right, imagine macam ni lah eh. If satu insurance company ada aset bernilai 100 million. Okay. Value of asset they have is 100 million. And that's one company yang nak insure, insure dia punya assets. Ataupun ya, insure lah dia punya insurable assets tu. And the value is more than 100 million. Okay. So kalau lah this company tak ambil insurance. And insurance company tak ambil insurance eh. So meaning if the client yang dia insure tadi tu yang asset dia more than 100 million. If they want to claim, so this insurance company akan tutup kedai terus because the asset is only 100 million. So bila lah kalau customer dia claim, so uh, the company will go bust ataupun dia akan go bankrupt. So, dia tak mampu nak bayar balik. Alright, so that's why this insurance company sometimes, most of the time, dia akan re-insure pula. So re-insurance company ni basically to insure insurance company. So dia macam double another layer of insurance. Okay, that's why for reinsurance, dia punya business tak, tak seramai insurance company. So, as you can see here, reinsurance, we have seven je. Yeah? <coughs> seven. Uh, two mission owned and five foreign uh, associations. Similarly dengan takaful, ngari takaful lah eh. Uh, dia dah combine je. Yeah? Still, still mission owned. For Rita Kapul, only four companies and three of them are for report. Okay, and lastly, okay, lastly uh, is the EFIs, the finance institutions. You have six and eleven. So, apa ah, the basic and DFI and others. So, DFI is special. Why I said special? Because uh, yeah, the Akta, like I said there, there's a act for the FIs. And under this act, they mention nama institution yang ada dalam Akta tu. Okay, so the FIs that prescribed under the FI Act 2002 are the number. Bank of the SME Bank, yeah, I mentioned tadi. Exim Bank, Scotland Bank, Bank Rakyat. Right, yeah? Okay, bank Royal, Bank Prince Royal, which is known as famously known as Bank Royal, BSN as I mentioned earlier, Bank Sepanjang National, and lastly Bank Pertanian ataupun Agro Bank. So these six banks are tertakluk under the FI Act. Okay, and they are specialized institution, and money from government akan disalurkan to these institutions to be distributed for the targeted uh, customers. Jadi kalau nak, ni boleh baca kat sini. What are the, are the firms? They are specialized financial institution established by the government with a specific mandate to help specific sector of the economy. Okay, SME lah, infrastructure, maritime, export oriented, high tech industries and so on. So, setiap satu institution ni ada dia punya mandate. And besides these six, okay, dia ada lagi additional Okay, so under the DFI institutions, so some of them is part of uh, the six study, which are Agro, Bank Raya, this one already. So selain daripada enam tu, so dia ada the MIDF, dia ada Sabah Dependent Bank, Sabah Credit Corporation, MPDC, MARA, APUMB, DNS, all of these, kalau you rasa semuanya is a Badan yang memberi pinjaman ataupun ya, financing to small medium enterprises. ACGC, uh, PMB, contohnya PMB, contoh one of the micro credit lender lah eh, for small businesses. Even dia ada bagi pinjaman kepada student pun. Bukan untuk student loan lah, eh, untuk student buka business for example. Uh, they offer that kind of financing. Okay, so target is slightly different from one to one. Okay, so that's 
the financial institution, uh, FI, sorry lah, kita ada bank dengan non-bank. Alright, so I think I just cakap lama ni, kita take a short break lah, take a short break before we continue a bit more of the financial institutions. Financial market, like I said, I takkan go through, eh, sebab financial market, kita takkan go through mostly in topic 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so financial market, I akan skip off ni, yang ada skips, apa skips commission tu. I akan focus more on the banking side. So, I'll leave you for a while with this slide, so we take five.
Okay, so <clears throat> let's continue. Okay, so uh, we've gone through all the participants or the solutions related to all of these banking and non banking solutions. Now, this is actually a summary that what we've discussed so far. Okay, so the banking systems comprise the commercial banks, investment banks, and some banks. Okay, and <clears throat> and it's considered the primary mobilizer of funds um, to the in source of financing to support economic activities in Malaysia. So overall, we have about twenty two thousand branches across the country. So quite quite a lot there of branches. And if you remember, one of the section under the banking system is others, can so. The other suit includes these 14, uh, 14 representative offices of foreign banks, as I said earlier, who do not conduct banking businesses but undertake research, liaison services, and also exchange of information. So these are mostly the function, uh, which is considered as a non banking uh, activities. So as of now, we have six Malaysian banking groups. If you remember, we had eight uh, banker banks, and out of these eight, Six of them are present in overseas Malaysian operations. Okay, yeah, in nineteen countries, in in Southeast Asia, and as far as in in UK as well. Some of the banks, like the banks, yeah, we have they are branch in UK, including representative offices as well. Okay, either in a direct ownership or sometimes by a subsidiary and also joint venture. So, for example, in Indonesia. Yeah, banking uh, regulations requires local bank, sorry, international banks to co-own with the local bank. So that's why uh, most of the banks, uh, you know, uh, the Malaysian banks who want to operate in Indonesia has to join venture with the local bank there. For example, CIMB, they have CIMB Niaga. In, in, in. Okay. And for non-bank, as I mentioned, have the EFIs, insurance companies, and these uh, institutions, the function is to complement, okay, to complement the banking institution because the banking institution cannot cater for everyone, right? And therefore, they need uh, the non bank financial institutions to complement. So, the keyword here is to complement, it's not substitute, right? It's not to replace, but to complement. So, you need to complete the other side of the Economy. Right. So we have insurance and reinsurance companies to conduct the life and general insurance together with Takaful and Takaful. And in terms of office and branches, um, the as you know, the insurance and Takaful businesses is not really operates like the banking, whereby they are more focusing on agents. So that's why in terms of branches. Insurance and Takaful operators doesn't have a lot of branches, but they move and they, they operate using agents. So that's why you will see some big agents. Uh, they can set up companies, and these companies is actually as agency companies and provide insurance and Takaful uh, products to the client. Yeah. Unlike bank, whereby the bank involved directly with the customer, but for insurance company, they usually operates via agency, so there's a one layer uh, institutions under the Takaful insurance companies. Right. Um, yeah, I will skip the Islamic financial institution for time being. You can read on your own from here. I want to focus on the FI next after the banking and non-banking, one of the non-banking element is the DFI, Development Finance. As I mentioned, it is a specialized financial institution established by the government with a specific mandate. If you notice, this is basically the extraction from the bank negara of your website. 
it includes the agricultural SMEs, infrastructure, and so on. And the act that they that we use to govern in terms of the development financial institutions are known as the FIA, Development Financial Act, uh, two thousand and two. And this will uh, give Ganagara the regu regulatory and supervisory framework. Okay. And the bank was appointed. Okay, here again, when you use the word the bank here refers to Ganagara Malaysia was appointed as the central regulatory and supervisory body for the advice. Okay, so here are the six, if you remember just now, six. Um, if I prescribed the DFIA, the Defi Finance Institutions Act, which can be Agro Bank, SME Bank, Bank of Bank Malaysia, Exim, Bank Raya, and also BSN. And down here for every bank under their logos here, uh, indicates the mandate. Okay, yeah, remember I, I use the word mandate just now. The target customers. So for example, for Agro accept savings and also provide financing okay you can do element deposits and also financing to support the agricultural sectors okay very specific for agriculture for sme the target to the sme size uh especially in manufacturing and construction okay but not subject to this tool uh, sometimes they may offer to other industries as well as long as they are part of smes for bank pembangunan, the Shiver Heart provides uh, financing to infrastructure projects, maritime, and also capital intensive and high tech industries. Right. Exim, mostly number one Exim, eh? export import, they are focusing more on exporting companies who want to export. Okay. Export uh, facilities, okay. including insurance as well. Uh, Bank Rakyat uh, encourage savings uh, to the members because this is part of cooperative, okay, cooperative bank. Okay, and lastly, Bank Sipada National focus on retail banking and personal finance for small savers. That's why BSN usually you will see in rural area. One point in town they have, but they focus on rural areas really out, out, out of town uh, locations uh, and it involve microfinance as well for them being small loans to small businesses okay so this is the advice right i will not go into detail all of this because i have one task for you later on Banks or something, I just a little bit just now. Okay, and I will re uh, revisit this in respective topics because we will have this in uh, respective topics later. Commercial and investment bank, especially. And the final part of uh, today's lecture is actually I want to share with you the, the intermediation function. Okay, in a banking business, you need to understand very simple rule, the very simple simple uh, uh relationship okay, between the bank and also uh, the customers okay when we talk about intermediation meanings we will have intermediaries okay orang tengah intermediaries so bank i just put here bank lah it can be the banking system or the non bank as well so i just give one example Bank will be the middleman, the intermediaries, and they will sit in the middle. Like this. Okay, so this is very important. You get this idea, you technically know how the bank works, and you can apply this concept to all bank and also non bank as well. <clears throat> okay, bank is the intermediaries. Okay, that's why they use the intermediation function. Eh? So they will be in the middle. So when we talk about in the middle, obviously, there will be one party on the left hand side and another party on the right hand side. Okay, so the first party that will communicate with the bank is known as uh, those with 
kita letak dia sebagai source eh. Source of fun. Source of fun. So who are those with source of fun? Those with access. Those who with access funds will go to the bank. They will go to the bank. What they do? They can. They will deposit. Ini payroll lah sebenarnya. This is reference. They will deposit money to the bank. When you have access cash, you have access funds. You go to the bank and you keep your money there, with the expectation of returns. So bank will give back to the source of funds in the form of return. It can be in the form of interest, it can be in the form of dividend. Okay, so the source of funds, I will deposit money to the bank. And bank will use the money and any returns will go back to the source of funds. So bank will uh, pull the money. The function bank will pull funds. Imagine if the whole country put their money in the banking system. Okay, so they have a lot of cash now. They have a lot of funds. So what they do with the funds? They will channel out. Okay, they receive the fund here. Next, the bank will channel out to the user. To provide the money. So now we have the users of fund. So who are the users of fund? So users of funds basically those who want to borrow money. Okay, so with Yang Bank money, the banks provide money is not from the banks own money. The, the money is actually come from the, the source of fund, the depositors. Okay. And this money, the bank will pull and they will channel it to the users of funds. Okay, so uh, they will channel in the form of financing. They will channel in the form of financing. So what users of funds need to do? So they borrow money from the bank in the form of financing. And obviously, they have to pay back to the bank. So the users of fund will pay back again the principal, the amount of money that they borrow, plus the interest. Okay, kalau kau mention interest or profit to the bank. Okay. So generally, that's how bank function as in the middle here. So I recap a little. Bank sit in the middle. Receive money from depositors. Uh, who are the depositors? Those with excess funds, uh, where they put money in the in the bank in the in the various types of instruments. We have savings account, fixed deposits, everything. I will talk about it later in terms of the detail of products. But that's how the money transfer eh, from the users of funds. Sorry, from the sources of funds to the bank. Bank will pull the money from all. Uh, a corner of uh, the country, they can uh, pull the funds, and this money will be channeled in the in the form of financing. Okay, financing in what in normal term is loans. Okay, you have car loans, credit cards, what else? Housing loans, personal loans. Okay, all of those loans will be channeled to the users of funds. So users of funds usually those who have deficit funds, only access to users of funds is mostly those with deficit. Okay, deficit funds. These deficit uh, units needs to borrow money from the bank. And when they borrow money from the bank, obviously they need to pay back the principal, the amount of money they, they borrow together with the interest and profit back to the bank. So how the bank makes money? 
bank makes money from the different rates. See the different rates between money that they generated from the users and the amount of money that they have to pay back to the source of funds. Just imagine like this. I just give you one simple example. Bank collect their deposits okay, from the source of fund, from the depositors uh, in a savings account. Okay, in a savings account, very simple account. And this savings account, uh, the bank will pay back to the depositors returns. And the rate I can give you is not more than 1% return. Not more. In savings account, eh? if not more than savings account, for the sake of argument, I just put 1% returns. This is the amount of money that the bank needs to pay back the source of funding to the depositors. 1%. So imagine if they have 100 million worth of deposits, they just need to pay 1% of this to back to the, to the depositors. Just 1%. Okay. And this money, the 100 million, will be pulled in the bank and will be channeled to the users of fund okay, in the form of many goods. Imagine they, they can give up 100 million also in the form of financing. Yes, yes, yes. for the sake of illustrations. And here, 100 million that they channel out to the uh, users of fund, they will charge interest. Remember eh, the, the one who takes loans have to pay back the principal, the amount of 100 million that they borrow together with the interest. And this interest, okay, they range between 3% to 18% depending on products. If we talk about car loans, okay, not 3%. If we talk about uh, housing loan, not 4%. You have personal loan. Ten percent. Credit cards. Eighteen percent. So imagine they just have to pay back one percent. Okay, but the bank can generate this amount of returns. So the difference between amount that they get from this transaction and the amount of they have to pay back. Okay, you like to take extreme, but we take in the middle, let's say about 10%. So the difference is the profits to the bank. So that's why uh, for a bank, if they manage their bank properly, okay, they shouldn't uh, get any loss. They should get profits every day. So that's why if you go to the news, uh, say I share with you Let's Google something. There will be some precious in my mind. Currently, maybe because of the economic situation. Uh, a lot of banks facing uh, financial difficulties during the, the pandemic, right? But still, they will make profits somehow. Even though this fall, meaning it's not lost yet, eh, but in terms of compare between the last year, they have a decrease in the form of uh, profits. But usually, the bank will generate loads of profits okay, because of the simple mechanism. Not simple, I mean, yeah, this is the, 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 the simplest uh, form of explanation. What is the intermediation functions okay, between the source of fund and the source of fund? So you can read back the functional financial system as a, as a big intermediary, and they will channel their resources from one party to another party. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Deficit units and the surplus unit. This is the source of fund. This is the users of fund. And it depends on the institutions. This is the intermediaries. It can be banks, it can be insurance companies, it can be the pension fund holders. Okay. So the, the concept is the same. 
right? They will receive money from the surplus. Because the surplus units here are the excess, fab, excess funds. And these excess funds will be deposited in a form of various products. Okay, depository insertion, including bank, you can put back here. So deposit, it can be savings, it can be current account, it can be FD, for example. And they will channel to the deficit units. Uh, for depository, it will be financing. Okay, so together with funding companies, because we don't have funding company anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, so now that's how it works in terms of the concept of financial determination. <clears throat> so I will not go through this. Okay, this is a uh, thing that we will discuss in topic three and four later on the overview of financial markets, as I mentioned. Uh, we have four different markets, which is important. Money market, short term, capital market, long term. Okay, how short? Less than one year. This is more than one year. Or no maturity. Okay, derivatives usually are used for risk management. Offshore market provides banking services to non residents. In non residents. Okay. Each and every details of the markets will be discussed, like I said, in the respective topics. Okay. Right. I think that's about it that I want to discuss with you today. But I will leave you with one task. Um, see how <coughs> right, so we have nine groups. This all. Of the list that we have here in the group, right? Okay. Even though I asked you to choose one bank, right? Okay, but for the first task here, you will not uh, research on your bank yet. Okay, but I will use the bank names as indicator of your groups. Okay. Have CIMB. Okay. Bank. So for those in the group, please find your group immediately. Because most of the group I think here already occupied with four members. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So we have nine groups all together. Right. So if we go back to the banking institutions, the financial institutions here. Um count it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just follow according. This is what random you got. So CMB needs to research on commercial bank. Young uh, is research about commercial banks. The bank research about investment bank. Alliance.
So I just lumped everything. Okay, so we have nine groups all together. Okay, I, I label you guys according to the banks that you've selected. And remember, for this first task, you don't have to research about your own banks yet. Okay, but in fact, I want you to uh, research or yeah, find out information about the respective institutions that are labeled here under the banking and so non-banking institutions. We have commercial, Islamic, investment, life insurance, general. General insurance, reinsurance, uh, Takaful operators, three Takaful, and also DFIs. So what I want you to find, yeah, first I want you to find uh, in the form of um, the functions the functions of the respective institutions okay. uh, the two example of products Okay, and lastly, um, example of companies. Okay, it's very simple. I don't want you to do a lot of things. I just want a one pitch. Infographics. Okay, what is the the, the task? A one page infographic. Okay, what is infographic? You will know what is infographic? It's just like a poster. Okay, and what do you need to explain in the infographic? One one page poster of infographic. It must consist of all three here. You must specify what are the functions of respective institutions, example of their products, okay, and also example of the companies. Okay, much like commercial bank we have 26 banks, and so you can list down, I don't know, according to your, your, your creativity to fit in the infographics, some example of the companies. Okay. So the function you try to summarize it. Uh, the the very important function because a lot of companies sometimes they have too many functions so you just elaborate or you try to explain it the core functions of the companies the most important parts okay you can have some of the information maybe in my notes some maybe online so use your creativity so i'll give you one week to do this okay so uh, the deadline will be next next Monday. Okay, so so this Monday can snap. Thank you very much. So yeah, this is basically last one. <coughs> That's all. So for those who yet to have a group, uh, contact your your colleagues, your classmates, look for any vacancy. Right. Else. So I foresee because the number, our number is odd, right? We have 39. So maybe yeah. other one, yeah, have to join any existing groups. So whoever wants to accept additional member, the, the one odd member, just update in the, in the group okay 
So remember, just one page infographic. Okay, one page infographic. I don't want to do many. It's not slides for the infographic. Yeah. Just, just find any tools that you can use. There are many infographic tools. Somewhere at the Canva, we have a lot of you just Google infographic tools and yeah, use your creativity and we expect it uh, next week and we can share among each other. Nanti. And for our quiz number one, we, all information will be based on your output. So Question will revolve around all of these nine institutions. Okay, so hopefully your information tool can help each other to answer the quiz number one. Or the online quiz later on as well. Quiz number one, I can revolve around this. Hopefully your information tool covers uh, the areas, but it's all revolved around functions, uh, the products, and so example of companies okay, so functions you can explore it right? can be in terms of sometimes you can add on in terms of history uh, yeah whatever, whatever you are relevant to the functions okay any questions so some to share So I believe lockdown I hope we did that for sure. So question. Oh, who is for? Can I join any? Yeah, like I said, we in, in the system we have 39. Uh 39, uh, 39 members. So if you take nine divide uh, times four is 38, right? Yeah, 36. Yeah. So there will be some groups yang akan ada lima orang. So, ataupun the remaining members can create another another group. Meaning, yeah lah. So, mani, yeah, the, the three remaining ni just go join whichever groups that we have here lah. So, we just keep nine, nine groups. Eh. Okay, whoever who has not have access to groups, Please find your groups uh, within these nine sahaja. I will just limit to these nine. And um, and I shared also earlier um, the, the WhatsApp group. Eh? Okay, thank you, Doctor. Yeah, so just, just uh, uh, join the WhatsApp group and try, try to find whichever groups who are willing to accept you guys. All right, any other matters? It's for the three. No question, doctor. All right. So, right, thank you very much for coming. Um, Remember the, the, the work uh, just give you. So next week will be the deadline. Just one page, I remember, just one page. Very simple, uh, informative information because this information will be distributed among you guys, Manuanya, Nanti, to be used as a notes. Okay, and the, the first quiz, a simple quiz, is Manuanya, revolve around the information that I asked you to find. And uh, Hopefully that information that you find out and then share with each other will help you guys to answer the questions. All right, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.